How did they arrive at this conclusion? If you support a losing team, an NFL team or a college football team, you could it could lead to weight gain. How'd they figure this out? What the researchers did is they looked at what the uh, food consumption was for participants in the study the Monday after their teams played. And for those whose teams lost, or especially if it was a close game and they lost, they tended to consume more of the fatty foods, you know, the carbohydrates, and kind of you know, what we refer to as the happy foods. And it's back to the old deal of... Um, you get a little depressed, you go to the freezer, you grab that tub of ice cream and kind of put your depression away because we know that those foods tend to raise serotonin levels in our brain and make us feel better. So when they're down about their team's performance, they eat better. So that, but that's why it's called comfort food, right? That's right. Right. So they, they, these people sought out comfort food. So I think the point of it was is that you know, we know people have that behavior when they have emotional issues going on in their life, and maybe they're a little down or depressed or whatever. In the classic, the boyfriend breaks up with the girlfriend type thing. But this takes it and shows that in everyday events that we may not feel are that significant. I mean, you know, it's just a ball game, right? Uh, can drive behaviors and change our behaviors. Now, let's be honest about it, though, Doc. It's, uh, you know, tailgating in general. A lot of people tailgate before football games. Um, that's not a very healthy activity either, though, is it? Well, Joe, I had the exact same thoughts. So I'm thinking, okay, the worst would be your team's going to lose, and you go out there to, you know, before the game and consume the bad stuff, and then you come out after they lose and do it again. Those people are getting hit twice as bad, right? Double, double dose of, of uh, all that good stuff that people love. But, you know, but again, though, you look at it, though, and you think about it, especially during, during football season, um, advertising, right? Food and sports, eating while watching sporting events. I mean, it's all over advertising. Seems uh, food and sports go together. Food, sports, and then you got the uh, beer industries pushing that. So, uh, you know, I guess the worst would be is if you're in a town that had a terrible football team, a terrible basketball team, and a, and a terrible baseball team, you know, you'd probably not be doing very well. Yes, I think the city of Cleveland, when you put it in those terms. So what's the game plan for folks who uh, support the Bills or the Browns or the Jags or... Are there any, uh, any other perennial uh, losers in, in the world of uh, professional football or college football? Well, I think maybe it's just an awareness that, uh, you know, to watch, watch what you're consuming, as you should at all times, but, uh, you know, especially see if you're uh, being driven by emotional factors uh, to which food you go to. If they're not in the house, you can't eat them. You know, so uh, the simple thing is just try to avoid keeping those foods in the house, the chips and the ice creams and the, the things that we know that you want to stay away from. Have a good season. Who do you support, by the way, Doc? We got the Cowboys down here, so we've been putting a few pounds on over the last few seasons <laughs> down here, too. Uh, Dr. Mark Anderson, he's a medical expert.